Well, if this isn't a blast from the past, uh, this is a Yamaha P2200 uh, power amplifier. It's a roughly 1977 model. And uh, one of these was the first video on this channel which ever got any real publicity. In fact, I made a couple of these years ago. It must have almost been in 2014. Uh, well, we just went through and got one of them up and running. Uh, this is not the same one. Uh, Quite uh, surprisingly, another one's popped up. A customer brought it in and he's complaining about distortion on one of the channels at higher power levels. Uh, so this has uh, obviously seen quite a bit of uh, use over the years. It's been a road amp, so it's all kind of rickety falling apart. It's a bit of had its uh, capacitors replaced uh, uh, quite recently and if we have a look inside it's got uh, quality caps in there, hopefully the right values and so forth. Uh, but uh, I figured we'd just start by powering it on. I haven't touched anything, I've just wired it up to my distortion meter and uh, scope and dummy load and uh, we'll see if it shows any s signs and symptoms. Uh, an issue we could run into is I get, get a bit of a grain leaf through the scope there, so it could mess with us slightly, but uh, let's just waste no further time. This is plugged in. Uh, I'm looking at a power meter and uh, should be ready to power on. Uh, one hand on the emergency power off switch. Uh, it's drawing 39 watts. These don't have a power on relay, so there's no click to be heard. And uh, this seems to be powering on. Fine, uh, it's just drawing 37 watts, which is uh, way too low. This should be over 50 watts idle, so we, uh, unless it's going to correct itself when it heats up, which I doubt, uh, we've got a bit of a bias issue on this thing. Uh, but uh, let's see how it performs. So we've got an 8 ohm load connected. Let's just uh, feed it some signal and uh, see uh, what we'll get out. And we'll do 3 volts and put some signal in. And we are getting signal. Uh, that's about one watt we're putting out there, so let's see how much distortion we've got in that. Uh, well, less than a percent. Nothing worth noting, but it's actually very good. So let's just uh, crank it up a bit to uh, see if it uh, gets issues at the 20-ish watt mark that uh, the customer was complaining about. And we'll just keep turning it on up on the distortion meter and we'll just look at the meters on the amplifier to gauge the power out but that's oh, that's a bit over 20 watts it's drawing quite a bit of power 350 watts could be okay but seems a bit on the high side let's check the distortion that's not much at all that's uh, less than 0.3 percent Less than 0.1.045% or so on the right channel, not too bad. The left channel is performing even better. This thing is not looking shabby at all. Let's just keep turning it up then. Get a bit closer to. Jeez, this thing is drawing a lot of power. 555 watts, and we're, now we're putting it over over 100 watts per channel now, so that's fine. And very low distortion of that channel. Very, very low distortion on the right channel. A 0.03% full scale there, and uh, we're at 0. 0.00. No, geez, that's like 0.008% or so. That's actually performing excellent. And the other channel, right channel, that's doing a bit worse, but still less than 0.1% at 100 watts per channel almost. That's not bad at all. I just keep turning it up. One of the channels is putting it a lot more than the other though. So we could have a bit of a gain mismatch issue or the meters are wonky. Well, let's verify. So the, the, the meters, the left channel is showing uh, 270 watts for the right channel is showing 200 so if we switch between the channels we should see a considerable change in output voltage there 
but there isn't, so the meters are just uh, not calibrated properly. We can fix that. Really, both channels are performing well within spec. We can probably push this thing very hard. Yeah, no, I think we're starting to clip. Yeah, we're clipping at uh, a shit ton of power per channel. That's right under clipping. You can perhaps see it on the scope there. Really, this is looking fine. We've got 45 volts per channel eight, but that's quite a bit. Very little distortion. This guy's performing excellent. Huh. Well within spec. Okay. That's a disappointment. So I'll let it warm up for a minute now. It's still just drawing about 40 watts and it's kind of jumping around a bit, which uh, could be... It, it's still a bit on the low side. It's pointing towards perhaps some bias issues, which we need to take a look at just to be sure. But we're looking at the noise floor here on the distortion meter and we're on the lowest range, minus 60 dB, the uh, full scale and uh, uh, the uh, left channel has uh, a noise floor of, uh, what's that? Mm, quite a high one, uh, that's like minus 62, 63, which is not very good. And uh, the right one has a considerable lower noise floor at minus 66 or so. Uh, these are relatively noisy amplifiers. It, I remember mine also had the issue where one channel was noisier than the other. And I think uh, if we engage the high pass filter, removing the 50 hertz sound, yeah, most of the noise is gone and it's probably not going to make as much of a difference on the other channel. Uh, it does make a difference on both channels. But really, this noise floor is by far within spec. The t signal to noise ratio we're going to guess is going to be. Uh, like 110 dB or so, so it's just absolutely fine. But yeah, we need to check the bias circuit out, adjust for bias, and make sure the bias potentiometers are dirty and scratchy, and they just give this thing a bit of an overhaul. Alright, and we're now uh, hooked up for a, a bias test, and uh, this device does seem rather fresh on the inside. If we have a close look, we do have the uh, new capacitors in there, and uh, they're quality branch uh, Nietzsche come for the most part. Uh, we do have the original uh, bias potentiometers, uh, which uh, might be a bit scratchy. That could be a part of the problem with this thing. Uh, but, and we've also got some uh, servicing stickers from way back when. Uh, this one's talking about parts having been exchanged uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. Channel B had some work done in 1986 and some transistors replaced in uh, November of 91. I've also got some stickers on the other channel there. Uh, so this thing has been looked after. Uh, the quality of the work is uh, uh, to be steam still. We do have some weird gunk on the big caps of it doesn't seem to be leakage it's more like dielectric grease i have no idea why that's even there quite odd uh, we also have some evidence of uh, this channel having been uh, taken out of the unit at some stage since we've got to uh, resold the uh, speaker plugs there so this has probably suffered a major failure at some point but uh, clearly the repairs have been of decent quality since uh, uh, we saw acceptable performance. Uh, so we're going to just uh, do the bias check. We'll turn the input uh, sliders to short and uh, well, we've got one meter per channel there and as you can see we are seeing a low bias currents for both channels. Uh, it's supposed to be 10 millivolts per channel uh, across the C, PT and CT points on a PCB and uh, they're both reading low. So I'm gonna let this thing warm up a bit more, uh, just let it heat up and then cool down and see if these values remain low. Uh, if they do, then we're gonna be adjusting the bias. If they correct themselves, then we're probably gonna be uh, fixing a bias anyway, because uh, 
I don't trust these potentiometers. Uh, this amplifier has supposedly been lying around for quite a while, so oxiding these parts was an issue on mine and would, that had caused it to explode. So uh, I want to clean these out uh, no matter what. Uh, but we'll start by just letting this thing heat up properly to operating temperature. And while it's heating up, I'll take the opportunity to adjust the meters because uh, neither of these are quite zeroed perfectly. You can see this one sitting right above zero and the same is true for this one. Uh, just slightly out of whack. So we'll just take a screwdriver in there. Give it a slight twirl. Oh, that's spot on. And this one as well. Spot on. Perfect. So now we need to address the issue of the, uh, the left meter reading very incorrectly. So we need to just uh, feed the amplifier a a known output level, uh, that's uh, it's according to the service manual, you calibrate it at 100 watts per channel output, and uh, that's supposed to give you a reading of 0 dB of a meter there. So we're going to be feeding this, or making this feed 100 watts into a dummy load, and adjust for zero. Uh, the zero adjustment is done on these two potentiometers on the top of a meter board. Nothing spectacular at all. I should also point out, whoever's replaced the light bulbs in this thing have been done quite a hacky job at it. That's not looking good at all. Only two bulbs working, one's been just soldered on there. Eww. Yuck. Alright, and we're now feeding uh, exactly 100 watts out of both channels, so 28.3 volts, and as you can clearly see, uh, neither meter is uh, quite on the money. Left one's showing way too much, right one's showing way too little, so we'll just give these a 12. Exercise them a bit. It's not uh, really dangerous to do it uh, in the meter circuit since uh, uh, there's no risk of exploding your PA if uh, the potentiometer is done for, as it is when you're adjusting the bias. But, uh, that's uh, perfectly 100 watts on the money of the right one, and uh, We'll do 100 watts right on the money on the left one as well. Okay, perfect. Now I am noticing that the meters aren't quite scaling properly. The right one seems to be ever so slightly more sensitive than the right one, even though we have calibrated them according to the manual. So now there isn't much to be done about that. Uh, we can just do the best the manual tells us to do. I'm not going to try and troubleshoot that because it really is a minuscule issue. And these are not precision meters by any shot of the imagination. So a few watts out of whack is just fine. But it does look a bit bad if you're pushing a mono signal and your meters aren't doing the same thing. But oh well. I guess you can't expect too much after 50 years of abuse. Alright, it's now been heating up for a while and the heat sinks at about 35 degrees or so. On that side should be pretty similar on the other side. Yeah, 35 ish. So that's uh, pretty much a bit over normal operating temperature unless you're doing stupid high loads. So let's see how the bio suggests it's uh, still a bit low. Uh, so I think we really do need to uh, adjust this quite considerably. All right, now it's been sitting around for quite a while, and uh, despite me actually doing a bit of a four-ohm power test while we're sitting, uh, the bias is still not going down, uh, going up to the correct level. Uh, so we're going to power this thing off and uh, clean the bias pots, just shove them full of alcohol, and uh, then give it a proper tune-up. So off it goes. Right, so that's the bias potentiometer right there, so we'll just give it a squirt of pure isopropyl alcohol and give it some exercise. 
while the amplifier is powered off, of course. Now this is quite tough to turn, so this is definitely not being cleaned out uh, during its previous services, else it would be turning quite a bit easier than it actually is. Ooh, heavy. Since this is so heavy, I'm actually going to put some uh, oil-based cleaner in there as well, just to get rid of the worst resistance. Hopefully that's going to ease it up a bit. That's making a difference. All right, I've uh, cleaned it up, let it uh, get some exercise, and uh, well, that's it pretty much back to where it was before. We need to be careful not to uh, have it way too different from how it was, since uh, you could potentially turn the bias up to uh, amplify destroying all levels by mistake. But uh, let's uh, turn it back on and see uh, how it does now. We have way too much bias there. That is quite sensitive, so we'll turn that down to a reasonable level. Remember, this is supposed to be 10 millivolts at normal operating temperature. It is quite cold already due to the giant convection heat sinks, but uh, well, let's just sit like this for a while and uh, come back once it's stabilized. All right, so it's been sitting for about uh, 20 minutes now, and uh, the rate of change has uh, declined uh, considerably. It's just kind of hovering around uh, this general region now, so I'm going to take it down to about 9.8 milliamps or so, and uh, I think that's going to be pretty good. Leaves us some headroom. Well, we don't have the resolution for that, so I generally prefer the lower bias over higher bias, so we'll just put it firmly at that setting there. These are wire-wound potentiometers as far as I'm aware, so they're not going to be very high res. So 9.2 on that, it's going to rise probably to the perfect level once you have this thing running up and running and pushing you know, a few watts per channel. The channels heat up a lot at very low loads due to the nature of these AB amplifiers. So that channel's fine. Let's uh, move on to the left one and uh, get that one perfect as well. And there we have the other channel stabilized at about 10 millivolts as well. So it seems this thing is in rather good shape. Uh, I'm not sure what issue the customer was actually complaining about, but uh, uh, let's just uh, hook a couple of speakers up to this thing and see if it has any audible issues, because really, uh, I haven't been able to spot anything at all on the instrument. All right, and we've now got uh, some music feeding into the amplifier, so let's turn up the volume and see if it's alive. I think it's going to do just fine. Right channel. <laughs> performing very well. This sounds most excellent, and we need to keep in mind I'm pushing 4 ohm speakers, so the actual power going out is uh, considerably more than what the meters are showing. This really does sound just fine to me, and if we... I am not hearing any issues with this thing at all. Excellent. Uh, just begs the question, why did the customer bring it in in the first place? Perhaps he's got something else iffy in his system. So I'm just going to give this a bit more of a listen and then put it back together and I think it's going to be fine. Unless I find something else. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.